Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new video for the Machine Quilting Party. Today we're quilting Super Spiral, one of my favorite designs to quilt with walking foot style quilting. This is so simple to quilt and the best thing is as you quilt it feels easier and easier to manage your quilt on your home sewing machine. So let's jump on the machine and see how this works with walking foot style quilting. So I'm getting started with Super Spiral and I created this homemade stencil from freezer paper just to mark that initial starting shape. And you can find this in the book, Explore Walking Foot Quilting. So I've marked this and I've been very careful to make sure that I've marked that in a clockwise direction so that the design itself is turning in a clockwise direction. And that's important because with a spiral, if you're turning in a clockwise direction, you'll have less and less of the quilt in the arm of the machine as you're stitching. If you do it the opposite way and have the design turning counterclockwise, you'll have more and more of the quilt in the arm of the machine. And that's not any fun. So this starting spiral shape, the most tightest part, is the hardest to stitch and it takes the most time. So we're gonna take this one stitch at a time here. I'm gonna take one stitch and lift the foot slightly. I'm using my knee lifter to lift the foot slightly and just very gently pivot the quilt. It's a very small curve, but it's important to make these stops with every single stitch. So that way the curve is going to be nice and curvy. If I take two or three stitches in a row at this point or try and pivot and stitch at the same time, more than likely I'm gonna end up with kind of a jagged line it's not gonna be a nice smooth curve. So it's one stitch at a time, and don't worry, by the time we reach the outer, you know, one or two rings beyond this central part, it's gonna get so much easier. And I'm kind of contending with loose threads and some fluffiness from my minky backing, so if I'm fiddling with stuff, that's why. I'm just trying to keep the quilt clean, so that way you can see what I'm doing. So it's just one stitch at a time. And I do think it's really important to mark this because see how much space the walking foot is taking up on this design? It is really hard to see. And if I was trying to stitch this without marks, it would, it would be a mess, it really would. I would not be able to stitch this cleanly and it certainly wouldn't be a very good luck to my starting spiral shape. There we go. So I think spirals are beautiful designs and once I get further out, it's gonna speed up considerably. But it's one of those things that I think taking your time at the beginning sets the stage for the rest of the design. And the more time and careful stitching that you can take here, the happier you're gonna be with your finished super spiral on your quilt. And I used Super Spiral to quilt the Jelly Town Baby Quilt, and I think it turned out great. You know, it's a wonderful design for adding that beautiful punch of texture. It's gonna have that nice, you know, circular texture over the quilt, which is always a nice counter to, you know, so many straight lines and sharp angles in the piecing. But this is even easier to stitch than Concentric Circles, another similar design, because we don't have to tie off and break thread. We can just continue spiraling outward and still get this gorgeous circular texture. So you can see already, this is sped up. Look, I can stitch four or five stitches before I have to stop and pivot in a major way. So yeah, so here's the starting point and I've stitched one ring, two rings, and I'm on my third ring. So within just three rings, I'm already faster. So I'm gonna continue stitching around this spiral and I'm gonna meet you back here when I've added a lot more rings to the design and give you more tips about using the edge of your walking foot as a guide. So I've added several more rings to my super spiral design and as you can see I'm now able to stitch and steer at the same time just allowing that curve to be formed and I'm lining up the edge of my walking foot here with the edge of the spiral. So I'm just running this along the line before and that's giving me a spacing of a half of an inch apart. Now, not all quilts need to be quilted that densely and you might be looking at it feeling like that's just a little too much. 
you would quilt it much faster and much more open if you used a guide bar on your walking foot instead. You could quilt, you know, one inch, two inches, up to three inches, at least with the guide bars that I have. Different feet have different limitations there, so you just have to check with what you can do with the walking foot that you have. So a more open spiral would certainly quilt it faster and be softer. So I just reached the edge of my quilting space. I set my spiral a little off center. So that way I would run up against the edge of my quilting space. I'm gonna continue working in a clockwise direction though because that feels the most natural to me to stitch. So I'm just stitching down along that marked line until I reach the point where the edge of my walking foot is once again in line with the edge of the spiral. And we oftentimes stitch spirals into square or rectangular shapes. So it's important to understand how to do this. So I've just reached the edge of that corner and now I'm gonna pivot back. I'm gonna rotate the quilt around and stitch down. Now I'm stitching down until this side of the walking foot is lined up with the spiral and I kind of overshot it. So I'm gonna back up two stitches and now this side of the walking foot is lined up with the spiral. Now you gotta be careful. Sometimes you can get some really weird angles with your quilt. So be careful that you don't start to pull it in a weird way or if it feels really unnatural to you, please understand that you can always just simply break thread and quilt always from a clockwise direction. So that felt a little weird, but it wasn't too bad and it wasn't too long of a line either. So it was manageable. So now I've stitched down and I'm gonna quilt this way. You just continue to alternate, stitching in one direction, then stitching in the other until you fill in that corner completely. And you know, if you're in a big quilt, this could be you know, quite a lot of space that you're having to stitch and fill in the corners, but that's exactly how I do it, no matter if it's a small block or it's a big quilt. I stitch all the way down through that corner, filling it in with more rings, and then stitch along the edge of your quilting space, reach your spiral, and continue quilting in that pattern. So now let's try Super Spiral with a totally different style of quilting on a very different type of machine. So this is a long arm. It's a specially designed machine. And as you can see, it is mounted on a frame. So that way I can move the machine, not the quilt. And here's the surprising thing. With Super Spiral, we actually can't use it the same way we can on a whole machine. On the whole machine with the walking foot, I could take that super spiral and keep going and going and going, and I could quilt potentially a king size quilt with that one design. Well, on the long arm frame, as you can see here, I'm limited by the size of the frame. So this is the max size super spiral that I could potentially create. And I'll tell you this too, because I'm moving the machine and I don't have the edge of the walking foot and the control that you get from the walking foot, I'm not gonna be able to stitch this nearly as nicely, nearly as smoothly as I did on the whole machine. So I really want this to be a good cross comparison. Uh, and this design in particular is really good for showing you the advantages of walking foot quilting. So I'm gonna get started right here and drop my needle down. So I'm gonna hit the needle up, needle down button again and pull on that top thread. That brings up a loop. That's your bobbin thread. I'm gonna hang on to that and then try and reposition the machine right in that exact same spot. Now I'm gonna take just one or two stitches over, just needle up, needle down. And what that does is it just locks the threads together so that they don't um, kind of get sucked down into the machine and do anything weird. Okay, so now we're gonna get started with our super spiral. And I'm gonna have to stop occasionally and move those thread tails until they're, I'm far enough away from it that I can tie them off and bury them. And as you can see, this time I'm actually spinning in a counterclockwise direction, but on the long arm, it totally doesn't matter because you know the quilt is staying stationary. So it doesn't matter what direction you're quilting in. Now I'm trying to stitch very carefully and I'm trying to maintain that same half inch distance between my lines. But as you can see, this is really just eyeballing it. And this is just me steering the machine and trying to keep it in the right position. And I'm, I'm wobbling a bit. Now these thread tails are driving me crazy. So I'm going to tie them in a knot and bury them in the middle layer of the quilt. And this is also something that's just ever so slightly tricky 
when it the machine the quilt's on the frame. So I'm going to tie a knot, overhand knot, real simple, and I install a cheater needle. And I'm just sliding this, and I'm trying to slide it right through the middle layer of the quilt. Now I can't really check it because I'd have to crawl underneath the frame <laughs> to check and make sure that it's not coming out the back side. Uh, but that works pretty good, and I've gotten pretty good at just kind of running it right underneath the surface of the quilt, right underneath the quilt top, and I know that's okay. There we go. So that's how I tie off and bury all of my thread tails, and you can find a more detailed step-by-step -step tutorial on that uh, at leahday.com. I'll make sure to link that up. But that's out of the way now, so I can just start swinging around and maybe move a little bit faster. But I don't want to move too fast. As you can see, I'm bringing my lines a little closer together. I do think that I get more control whenever I'm kind of swinging around. If I go too slow, I feel like that's where I get more wobbles. There we go. And you know, this, you know, I don't think that it's a bad thing, you know, that it's a little bit wobbly. I, I don't think that's a deal breaker. If this is the design that you want to stitch on your quilts, then the, you're going to get a lot of practice. You're going to get a lot of bang for your buck for every spiral that you stitch. Because as you can see, as I'm working my way outward, it's definitely covering a large amount of space in a short amount of time. And keep those lines in check. Make sure they don't get too far apart. I can say that I think a, a square spiral would be easier and certainly easier to evenly space because then I could use rulers with my ruler foot in order to keep those lines just, you know, perfectly evenly spaced. The circle is a lot trickier. Uh, and so I think that you're just gonna have to be forgiving. <laughs> just allow it to be a little messy and that's okay. So I'm swinging back around again and I have a plan to do echo ditching on the outsides up all of my diamond shapes. So I want to stay at least a quarter of an inch away from that diamond. There we go. That looks good. I'm happy with that. And I could probably make this bigger if I wanted it to be bigger, but you know, only about by another inch or so, I am limited by the amount of space that I have in this frame. So that would be about the max size of spiral, of super spiral that I could stitch using this method of quilting. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot, both how to quilt super spiral with a walking foot and how to quilt it on a long arm. And it's really two different takes. It's, it's two totally different ways of quilting the design because when you're quilting with the walking foot, you have so many things that are working to your advantage. You know, you can use the edge of the walking foot as a guide, uh, or you can put a guide bar on your walking foot and space the lines out more if you wanted to. You can quilt in a clockwise direction and have less and less of the quilt in the arm of the machine. Uh, and you can keep it really nice and evenly spaced. Now the downside is it's a little slower. You know, you're gonna have to go at that slower pace of the walking foot. Uh, you know, the walking foot's designed to walk <laughs> more than anything else. On the long arm, we can go a lot faster. We can speed through that spiral super quickly. But the downside is we're not gonna have that perfectly even spacing and we're gonna have some wobbles. You know, it's not going to be perfect. We're also gonna be limited by the size of the frame. I can't stitch this over an entire quilt. I can stitch this within the amount of space I have on the frame. So there's upsides and downsides to all sides of quilting. You know, I really hope that you can see that. And I hope that you will give Super Spiral a try. No matter how you stitch it, it's a really cool design to have in your quilting toolbox. And I think you'll like it a lot. So that's it for this video. If you'd like to learn more about walking foot quilting, make sure to check out my book, Explore Walking Foot Quilting with Leah Day. You can check it out at leahday.com slash walking foot. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the long arm that I'm quilting on, it's the Grace Cunique 14 Plus, or it's been recently renamed the 15R, and I'm quilting on the continuum frame here. And you can learn more about this exact setup at leahday.com slash grace. So until next time, Let's go quilt.